Hello again, welcome back to my clustering tutorials. Another cloudy and rainy day here in London. It's August and it's unbelievable. Heavy rain outside. <coughs> Let's continue. Um, for cl hierarchical clustering, uh, it involves creating clusters that have a predetermined ordering from top to bottom. I think the name suggested hierarchical clustering. So we have a hier hierarchy here uh, and we go top to bottom. For example, all files and folders on the hard disk are organized in a hierarchy and there are two types of hierarchical clustering, divisive and agglomerative. Now if we look at this diagram, we can see that the divisive uh, clustering goes from top to bottom, so we start big and then break things down into smaller pieces and in uh, agglomerative clustering we start with very small pieces and then we go all the way up by merging things until we uh, have a big uh, a component. Divi the divisive method, the way it works is that we assign all the observations to a single cluster and then partition the cluster to two least similar clusters. So one big cluster and then we divide it into two least similar cluster. That means the this similarity needs to be high and this similarity needs to be low. This similarity needs to be high. Finally, we proceed recursively on each cluster until there is one cluster for each observation. So there we split it into two and then we just go recursively. We divide each of those two using the same way and then we continue recursively until there's only one cluster for each observation. The agglomerative method is that we assign each observation its own cluster so in a way it's the opposite of the previous one uh, or the opposite of the divisive we start with each component or each object or each observation we give it its own cluster then we compute the similarity for example the distance between each of the clusters and we join the two most similar clusters so we find the two most similar clusters we merge them together and then we keep repeating that until we end until we end up with only one cluster. So if we look at the algorithm of that, given a set of objects x1 to xn and a distance function, uh, distance between cluster one and cluster two, for all the values in the in the set x, now for all of these, we give each of them its own cluster. So ci equals xi, that's set cluster i. So the set of clusters now is has cn clusters, the same number of the objects or the points, and then I'm sorry, we loop through them, and then we find the two most similar clusters in C. We remove those two similar clusters, we merge them, and then we add them to back to C, and then we continue looping until we remove all the clusters, and we end up only with one large. Um, cluster. I hope that makes sense. Just uh, an idea of grouping or clustering things together. This is a very useful technique actually in programming. Now the proximity matrix. Before any clustering is performed it's required to determine the proximity matrix containing the distance between each point using a distance function. The proximity matrix uh, is a symmetric matrix so what we do is if we have let's say cn cl n clusters then we have a matrix the rows are cluster 1 cluster 2 cluster 3 all the way to cluster n and the uh, columns are C cluster 1 cluster 2 until cluster n and then we just fill in the matrix with the distances between each two clusters and now you must have uh, noticed by now that the um, the matrix is symmetric uh, meaning that the numbers on the lower half will be the same as the numbers on the top half and the values along the diagonals are zero. So we use a distance function, then the matrix we update it to display the distance between each two clusters, between each cluster. Now the following methods differ in how the distance between each cluster is measured. Now how do we measure the distance between two clusters? We have five methods, uh, single linkage, complete linkage, average linkage, or using the minimum variance, or which is known as Ward's method, or using the centroid. The single link, all of them are quite easy to understand. The single linkage method, uh, in this method, 
the distance between two clusters is defined as the shortest distance between two points in each cluster so let's assume that we have two clusters R and S we have the we find the two closest points in these two clusters and the distance is uh, uh, considered to be that distance between the two closest points in these two clusters as you can see here the distance between the clusters R and S to the left is equal to the length of the arrow between their two closest points that's just the minimum value of distance between a point from the first cluster and a point from the other cluster the complete linkage is the opposite of the single linkage we just find the distance between the two furthest points in complete linkage hierarchical clustering the distance between two clusters is defined as the longest distance between two points in each cluster for example the distance between clusters R and S is equal to uh, to the length of the arrow between their two furthest points so we find the two furthest points and uh, that is the distance between them in average linkage a ver an, 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 in average linkage hierarchical clustering the distance between two clusters is defined as the average distance between each point in one cluster to every point in the other cluster so for example the distance between clusters R and S is equal to the average between each arrow between connecting uh, each arrow connecting the point of one cluster to the other so it's just the average as you can see here 1 over n r n s and n r is the number of points in cluster r and s is the number of points in cluster uh, s the other two methods which are wards method and centroid method they're also quite simple in wards method or the minimum various variance uh, method it uses the error sum of squares between the two clusters over all of the variables uh, uh, as the as the distance so the sum of squares I'm sorry the error sum of squares between the two clusters over all the points or the object or the variables is used as a distance whereas in the centroid method centroid usually known as the center of gravity or the center of the groups of objects uh, is used to determine the average distance between clusters of objects so if we go back to any of these examples instead of using the furthest or the closest points we find the centroid of this group the centroid of this cluster and center of this cluster and the distance is considered to be the distance between those two uh, uh, values of the centroid i'm going to stop here thank you very much again for watching and i'll see you in my next video